Many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events which have been fulfilled in our midst, precisely as those events were transmitted to us by the original eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. I too have carefully traced the whole sequence of events from the beginning and have decided to set it in writing for you, Theophilus, so that your excellency may see how reliable the instruction was that you received. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the priestly class of Abiah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron named Elizabeth. Both were just in the eyes of God, blamelessly following all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. They were childless, for Elizabeth was sterile. Moreover, both were advanced in years. Once, when it was the turn of Zachariah's class, and he was fulfilling his functions as a priest before God, it fell to him by lot, according to priestly usage, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and to offer incense. While the full assembly of people was outside praying at the incense hour, the angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right of the altar of incense. Zechariah was deeply disturbed upon seeing him and overcome by fear. The angel said to him, Do not be frightened, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth shall bear a son whom you shall name John. Joy and gladness will be yours, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He will never drink wine nor strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. Many of the sons of Israel will he bring back to the Lord their God. God himself will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the rebellious to the wisdom of the just and to prepare for the Lord a people well disposed. Zechariah said to the angel, How am I to know this? I am an old man, my wife too is advanced in age. The angel replied, I am Gabriel, who stand in attendance before God. I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now you will be mute, unable to speak until the day these things take place, because you have not trusted my word. They will all come true in due season. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah, wondering at his delay in the temple. When he finally came out, he was unable able to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision inside. He kept making signs to them, for he remained speechless. Then, when his time of priestly service was over, he went home. Afterward, his wife, Elizabeth, conceived. She went into seclusion for five months, saying, In these days, the Lord is acting on my behalf. He has seen fit to remove my reproach among men. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Upon arriving, the angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored daughter. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. She was deeply troubled by these words and wondered what his greeting meant. The angel went on to say to her, Do not fear, Mary. You have found favor with God. You shall conceive and bear a son and give him the name Jesus. Great will be his dignity, and he will be called Son of the Most High. 
the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will be without end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I do not know man? The angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Hence, the holy offspring to be born shall be called Son of God. Know that Elizabeth, your kinswoman, has conceived a son in her old age. She was thought to be sterile as now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. Mary said, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me as you say. With that, the angel left her. Thereupon, Mary set out, proceeding in haste into the hill country to a town of Judah, where she entered Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and cried out in a loud voice, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? The moment your greeting sounded in my ears, the baby leapt in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who trusted that the Lord's words to her would be fulfilled. Then Mary said, My being proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his servant in her lowliness. All ages to come shall call me blessed. God, who is mighty, has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He has shown might with his arm. He has confused the proud in their inmost thoughts. He has deposed the mighty from their thrones and raised the lowly to high places. The hungry he has given every good thing, while the rich he has sent empty away. He has upheld Israel his servant, ever mindful of his mercy, even as he promised our fathers, promised Abraham and his descendants forever. Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned home. When Elizabeth's time for delivery arrived, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives, upon hearing that the Lord had extended his mercy to her, rejoiced with her. When they assembled for the circumcision of the child on the eighth day, they intended to name him after his father, Zechariah. At this, his mother intervened, saying, No, he's to be called John. They pointed out to her, None of your relatives has this name. Then using signs, they asked the father what he wished him to be called. He signaled for a writing tablet and wrote the words, His name is John. This astonished them all. At that moment, his mouth was opened and his tongue loosed, and he began to speak in praise of God. Shema, O Israel, l'Adonai l'Ochenu, l'Adonai Echad. Fear descended on all in the neighborhood. Throughout the hill country of Judea, these happenings began to be recounted to the last detail. All who heard stored these things up in their hearts, saying, What will this child be? And was not the hand of the Lord upon him? Then, Zechariah, his father, filled with the Holy Spirit, after this prophecy.
Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited and ransomed his people. He has raised the horn of saving strength for us in the house of David, his servant. As he promised through the mouths of his holy ones, the prophets of ancient times, salvation from our enemies and from the hands of all our foes. He has dealt mercifully with our fathers and remember the holy covenant he made. The oath he swore to Abraham, our father, he would grant us that rid of fear and deliver it from the enemy. We should serve him devoutly and through all our days, be holy in his sight. And you, O oh child, O oh child, shall be called prophet of the Most High. For you shall go before the Lord to prepare straight paths for him, giving his people a knowledge of salvation in freedom from their sin. All oh, this is the work of the kindness of our God. He, the day spring, shall visit us in his mercy to shine on those who sit in darkness. And in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace, to guide our feet into the way of peace. child grew up and matured in spirit. He lived in the desert until the day when he made his public appearance in Israel. In those days, Caesar Augustus published a decree ordering a census of the whole world. This first census took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to register, each to his own town. And so Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to David's town of Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David, to register with Mary, his espoused wife, who was with child. While they were there, the days of her confinement were completed. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the place where travelers lodged. Alleluia, Adonai kol gohim. Alleluia, Adonai kol gohim. Alleluia, Adonai kol gohim. There were shepherds in that locality, living in the fields and keeping night watch by turns over their flocks. The angel of the Lord appeared to them as the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were very much afraid. The angel said to them, you have nothing to fear. I come to proclaim good news to you, tidings of great joy to be shared by the whole people. This day in David's city, a savior has been born to you, the Messiah and Lord. Let this be a sign to you. In a manger, you will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, When the angel 
angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this event which the Lord has made known to us. They went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Once they saw, they understood what had been told them concerning this child. All who heard of it were astonished at the report given them by the shepherds. Mary treasured all these things and reflected on them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen in accord with what had been told them. Hallelujah, Adonai kol gohim. Hallelujah, Adonai kol gohim. Hallelujah, Adonai kol gohim. When the eighth day arrived for a circumcision, the name Jesus was given the child, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. When the day came to purify them according to the law of Moses, the couple brought him up to Jerusalem so that he might be presented to the Lord. For it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be consecrated to the Lord. They came to offer in sacrifice a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accord with the dictate in the law of the Lord. There lived in Jerusalem at that time a certain man named Simeon. He was just and pious and awaited the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It was revealed to him by the Spirit that he would not experience death until he had seen the anointed of the Lord. He came to the temple now, inspired by the Spirit. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform from the customary ritual of the law, he took him in his arms and blessed God in these words. Now, Master, you can dismiss your servant in peace. You have fulfilled your word. For my eyes have witnessed your saving deed displayed for all your peoples to see. A revealing light to the Gentiles, the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother were marveling at what was being said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to be the downfall and the rise of many in Israel. A sign that will be opposed. A sign that will be opposed. And you yourself shall be pierced with a sword so that the thoughts of many hearts may be laid bare. There was also a certain prophetess, Anna by name, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. Kave kaviti Adonai Vayate lai vaishma shavati She had seen many days having lived seven years with her husband after a marriage and then as a widow until she was 84. She was constantly in the temple worshipping day and night and fasting and prayer. Kave kaviti Adonai Vayete lai vaishma shavati Coming on the scene at this moment, she gave thanks to God and talked about the child to all who looked forward to the deliverance of Jerusalem. When the pair had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee in their own town of Nazareth. The child grew in size and strength, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. His parents used to go every year to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12, they went up for the celebration as was their custom. As they were returning at the end of the feast, the child Jesus remained behind, unknown to his parents. Thinking he was in the party, they continued on the journey for a day, looking for him among their relatives and acquaintances. Not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem in search of him. 
On the third day they came upon him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. All who heard him were amazed at his intelligence and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? You see that your father and I have been searching for you in sorrow. He said to them, Why did you search for me? Did you not know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not grasp what he said to them. He went down with them then and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother, meanwhile, kept all these things in memory. Jesus, for his part, progressed steadily in wisdom and age and grace before God and men. Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was procurate of Judea, Herod Tetrarch of Galilee, Philip his brother Tetrarch of the region of Eutoria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias Tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God was spoken to John, son of Zechariah, in the desert. He went about the entire region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance which led to the forgiveness of sins. As is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, a herald's voice in the desert crying, make ready the way of the Lord, clear in his straight paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be leveled. The winding shall be made straight and the rough way smooth and all mankind shall see the salvation of God. He would say to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers! Who told you to flee from the wrath to come? Give some evidence that you mean to reform. Do not begin by saying to yourselves, Abraham is our father. I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now, the axe is laid to the root of the tree. Every tree that is not fruitful will be cut down and thrown into the fire. The crowds asked him, what ought we to do? What ought we to do? Let the man with two coats give to him who has none. The man with food should do the same. Tax collectors also came to be baptized. And they said to him, teacher, teacher, what are we to do? Exact nothing over and above your fixed amount. Soldiers likewise asked him, what about us? What about us? Don't bully anyone. Denounce no one falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were full of anticipation, wondering in their hearts whether John might be the Messiah. John answered them all by saying, I am baptizing you in water. But there is one to come who is mightier than I. I'm not fit to loosen his sandal strap. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into the granary. But the chaff, he will burn in unquenchable fire. Using exhortations of this sort, he preached the good news to the people. Herod the Tetrarch was censured by John on the subject of Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all his other crimes. He added to his guilt by shutting John up in prison. <laughs>
and all the people have been baptized, and Jesus was a prayer after likewise being baptized. The skies opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in visible form like a dove. A voice from heaven was heard to say, you are my beloved son, on you my favor rests. Jesus began his work. He was about 30 years of age, being so it was supposed. Son of Joseph, son of Eli, son of Martha, son of Levi, son of Melchi, son of Janai. Son of Joseph, son of Matthia, son of Amos, son of Nahum, son of Esli, son of Negai, son of Mahal, son of Matthia. Son of Semein, son of Josek, son of Jodah, son of Joannan, son of Resa, son of Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, son of Neri, son of Melki, son of Abi. Son of Kosam, son of El Madan, son of Er, son of Joshua, son of Eliezer, son of Jorim, son of Mathot, son of Levi, son of Simeon. Son of Judah, Son of Joseph, Son of John, Son of Eliakim, Son of Melia, Son of Menna, Son of Matatha, Son of Metha. Son of David, Son of Jesse, Son of Obed, son of Boaz, son of Salah, son of Nashon, son of Aminadab, son of Admin, son of Arni, son of Israel, son of Perez, son of Judah, son of Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham. Son of Tera, son of Nahu, son of Seruk, son of Ruk, son of Peleg, son of Erber, son of Shehela, son of Kenan, son of Arafaxad, son of Shem, son of Noah, son of Lamuk, son of Methuselah, son of Methuselah, son of Methuselah, son of Methuselah. Son of Enoch, son of Jared, son of Mahalali, son of Kenan, son of Enoch, son of Seth, son of Adam, son of God. Son of God, Son of God.
Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, then returned from the Jordan, where he is conducted by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days, where he was tempted by the devil. Son of God, 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 Son of God. During that time, he ate nothing. And at the end of it, he was very hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to turn into bread. Jesus answered him, scripture has it, not on bread alone shall man live. Then the devil took him up higher and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instance and said to him, I will give you all this power and the glory of these kingdoms. The power has been given to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Prostrate yourself in homage before me, and it shall all be yours. In reply, Jesus said to him, Scripture has it, you shall do homage to the Lord your God. Him alone shall you adore. Then the devil led him to Jerusalem and set him on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down from here, for scripture has it. He will bid his angels watch over you, and again with their hands they will support you, that you may never stumble on a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, it also says, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When he'd finished all his tempting, he left him to await another opportunity. Jesus returned in the power and spirit of Galilee, and his reputation spread throughout the region. He was teaching in the synagogues, and all were loud in his praise. He came to Nazareth, where he had been reared, and entering the synagogue on the Sabbath, as he was in the habit of doing, he stood up to do the reading. When the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed him, he unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Therefore he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and release to prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he gave it back to the assistant and sat down. All in the synagogue had their eyes fixed on him. And he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. All who were present spoke favorably of him. They marveled at the appealing discourse which came from his lips. They also asked, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, you would doubtless quote me the proverb, Physician, heal yourself. And say, do here in your own country the things we have heard you have done in Capernaum. But in fact, no prophet gains acceptance in his native place. Indeed, let me remind you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heavens remained closed for three and a half years and a great famine spread over the land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but to a widow of Zarephath near Sidon. Recall, too, the many lepers in Israel in the days of Elisha the prophet, yet not one was cured except Naaman the Syrian. At these words, the whole audience in the synagogue was filled with indignation. They rose up and expelled him from the town, leading him to the brow of the hill in which it was built, and intending to hurl him over the edge but he went straight through their midst and walked away. He then went down to Capernaum, a town of Galilee, and began instructing them on the Sabbath. They were spellbound by his teaching, for his words had authority. 
in his synagogue, there was a man with an unclean spirit who shrieked in a loud voice, Leave us alone! What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus said to him sharply, Be quiet, come out of him. At that the demon threw him to the ground before everyone's eyes and came out of him without doing him any harm. I was struck with astonishment. And they began saying to one another, What is there about his speech? commands the unclean spirits with authority and power, and they leave. His renown kept spreading through the surrounding country. Leaving the synagogue, he entered the house of Simon. Simon's mother-in-law was in the grip of a severe fever, and they interceded with him for her. He stood over her and addressed himself to the fever, and it left her. She got up immediately and waited on him. At sunset, all the people sick with a variety of diseases took them to him. He laid hands on each of them and cured them. Demons departed from many, crying out as they did so, You are the Son of God. He rebuked them and did not allow them to speak because they knew he was the Messiah. The next morning, he left the town and set out in the open country. The crowds went in search of him and when they found him, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said to them, To other towns I must announce the good news of the reign of God, because that is why I was sent. And he continued to preach in the synagogues of Judea. As he stood by the lake of Genezareth, and the crowds pressed in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats moored by the side of the lake, the fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to pull out a short distance from the shore. Then remaining seated, he continued to teach the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon answered, <laughs> Master, we have been hard at it all night long and have caught nothing. But if you say so, I will lower the nets. Upon doing this, they caught such a great number of fish that the nets were at the breaking point. They signaled to the mates in the other boat to come and help them. These came, and together they filled the two boats until they nearly sank. At the sight of this, Simon Peter fell at the knees of Jesus, saying, Leave me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For indeed, amazement at the catch they had made seized him and all his shipmates, as well as James and John, Zebedee's sons, who were partners with Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. With that, they brought their boats to land, left everything, and became his followers. On another occasion in a certain town, a man full of leprosy came to him. Seeing Jesus, he bowed down to the ground and said to him, Lord, if you will to do so, you can cure me. Jesus stretched out his hand to touch him and said, I do will it. Be cured. Immediately the leprosy left him. Jesus then instructed the man, tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest. Offer for your healing what Moses prescribed. That should be proof for them. His reputation spread more and more, and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their maladies. He often retired to deserted places and prayed. One day Jesus was teaching, and the power of the Lord made him heal. 
Sitting close by were Pharisees and teachers of the law from every village from Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. Some men came along carrying a paralytic on a mat. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus, but they found no way of getting him through because of the crowd. So they went up on the roof. There they let him down with his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd before Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said, My friend, your sins are forgiven you. Some scribes and Pharisees began a discussion saying, Who is this man who utters blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? He knew their reasoning, however, and said to them, Why do you harbor these thoughts? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven you or to say get up and walk? In any case, to make it clear to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then addressed the paralyzed man. I say to you, get up, take your mat with you, and return to your house. At once, the man stood erect before them. He picked up the mat he had been lying on and went home praising God. At this, they became, they were filled with joy, and they said to them, this is incredible. We have seen incredible things today. Alleluia Adonai, Alleluia Adonai. Alleluia Adonai, Alleluia Adonai. Alleluia Adonai, Alleluia Adonai. Afterward, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at his customs post. He said to him, Follow me. Leaving everything behind, Levi stood up and became his follower. After this, Levi gave a great reception for Jesus at his house, in which he was joined by a large crowd of tax collectors and others at dinner. Some scribes and Pharisees of their party said to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and non-observers of the law? Jesus said to them, The healthy do not need a doctor. Sick people do. I have not come to invite the self-righteous to a change of heart, but sinners. They said, John's disciples fast frequently and offer prayers. The disciples of the Pharisees do the same. Yours, on the contrary, eat and drink freely. Jesus replied, Can you make the guests of the groom fast while the groom is still with them? But when the days come that the groom is removed from their midst, they will surely fast in those days. He then proposed to them this figure. No one tears a piece from a new coat to patch an old one. If he does, he only tears the new coat, and the piece taken from it will not match the old. Moreover, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Should he do so, the new wine will burst the old skins, the wine will spill out, and the skins will be lost. New wine should be poured into fresh skins. No one after drinking old wine, once new. He says, I find the old wine better. Once on a Sabbath, Jesus is walking through the standing grain, and his disciples are pulling off grain heads, shelling them with their hands, and eating them. Some of the Pharisees asked, Why are you doing what is prohibited on the Sabbath? Jesus replied, Have you not read what David did when he and his men were hungry? How he entered God's house, took and ate the holy bread and gave it to his men, and even though only priests are allowed to eat it, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, he was teaching in a synagogue where there was a man whose right hand was withered. 
The scribes and Pharisees were on the watch to see if he would perform a cure on the Sabbath so that they might find a charge against him. He knew their thoughts, however, and said to the man whose hand was withered, Get up and stand here in front. The man rose and remained standing. Jesus then said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath or evil, to preserve life or destroy it? He looked around at them all and said to the man whose hand was withered, stretch out your hand. The man did so, and his hand was perfectly restored. At this, they became frenzied, and they began asking one another what could be done to Jesus. Then he went out to the mountain to pray, spending the night in communion with God. At daybreak, he called his disciples to him, and he selected 12 of them to be his apostles. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became traitor. Coming down the mountain with them, he stopped at a level stretch where there are many of his disciples. A large crowd of people was with him, from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. People who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. Indeed, the whole crowd was trying to touch him because power went out from him which cured all. Then raising his eyes to his disciples, he said, Blessed are you poor. The reign of God is yours. Blessed are you who hunger. You shall be filled. Blessed are you who are weeping. You shall laugh. Blessed shall you be when men hate you, when they ostracize you and insult you, and proscribe your name as evil because of the Son of Man. On the day they do so, rejoice and exult, for your reward will be great in heaven. Thus it was that their fathers treated the prophets. But woe to you, rich, for your consolation is now. Woe to you who are full, you shall go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, you shall weep in your grief. Woe to you, and all speak well of you. Their fathers treated the false prophets in just this way. To you who hear me, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who maltreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn and give them the other. If someone takes your coat, give them your shirt as well. Give to all who beg from you. When a man takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others what you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, how can you claim any credit? Sinners do as much. If you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what merit is there in it for you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. Love your enemy and do good. Lend without expecting repayment. 
then will your recompense be great. You will rightly be called sons of the Most High, for He Himself is good to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be compassionate as your Father is compassionate. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Pardon, and you shall be pardoned. Give, and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will they pour into the fold of your garment. For the measure you measure with will be measured back to you. Blessed are you, poor. The reign of God is yours. Blessed are you who hunger. You shall be filled. Blessed are you who are weeping. You shall laugh. Blessed shall you be when men hate you, when they ostracize you and insult you and proscribe your name as evil. Because of the Son of Man, on the day they do so rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and exult, for your reward shall be great in heaven.